minutes, we're going to look at a variety of types of level controls. Um, we're going to look at the full gamut from mechanical floats to probe types, electromechanical, all-in-one low water cutoff devices, and even differential pressure transmitters. So basically what we're going to do is go through each of these, how they work, what their applications are, and in many cases how they're wired. Let's start with one of the simplest, a trough valve. Basically this is a float operated valve where the valve, due to buoyancy, rises on water rise and physically shuts off our valve. This is great in that I can go to Rural King and get a replacement if I need to, um, but it has its own benefits and drawbacks. Typically you're not going to use this for a boiler because it's not rated for the temperature and pressure, it's just not designed for it. But we often use it to maintain level in say a feed tank so that incoming water can maintain a minimum level in the tank. Um, one thing that's important with it, good to mention, is a pressure reducing valve. If we bring too much pressure into this float uh, valve, it's going to bleed through. So by having a pressure reducing valve on the inlet, we can maintain maybe 5 psi and the float doesn't have any difficulty in functioning correctly. To change the level in the tank, we simply loosen the set screw for the float angle and tighten it. One downside for this is that because the, all the mechanisms are inside the tank, in order to troubleshoot it, we may have to remove the bolts and mounting plate. So we're gonna have to drain the tank in order to get this out. So in short, an advantage is easy to find replacement parts. Downside is it's inside the tank, so we've got to pull it out and remove it. So last week we looked at the trough valve. One of the disadvantages to the trough valve is we can get de deterioration of that flange. So the next step, if we have that problem, is we can go to a bi-probe level control. We're gonna take a look at that on the Parker because we've got a perfect example. So here's a really simple two probe level control for a feed tank. So this is maintaining a minimum level in the tank and it's doing so with conductivity probes. The premise of a conductivity probe is we're sending voltage to the probe and we're seeing whether or not it's bridging to ground through the conductivity of the water. So the way that this operates is when the water is off the probes, um, this relay is calling for our solenoid to be on because we have no water. Um, water will fill and when we contact the top probe, the relay is going to shut off the water. Then when the water falls and comes off the bottom of the two probes, it's going to re-energize the relay. So this is quite simple, um, not hard to troubleshoot. And advantages, all of the connections are through the top of the tank, so we don't have flange deterioration. It's easy to retrofit. The downside is that it is on-off and where a trough valve will modulate the flow into the tank, this is all or nothing. So what we sometimes encounter with this is we'll have the tank cool um, when the fresh water's making up. So if we've got a tank with on-off feed water, a lot of times we'll use preheat or something to help maintain a steady tank temperature. We're gonna look at a classic low water cutoff level control device known as the McDonnell Miller 150. This is a two-stage switch consisting of two micro switches, one for burner limit and one for level control. So in normal operation with a normal level, the level will fluctuate and make and break the pump circuit to maintain the level in the boiler. But if the level continues to fall, we'll break the burner circuit so that we shut it down and don't allow the unit to continue running. This is the newest model of the McDonnell Miller 150, which uses micro switches. One important thing to know about the micro switches is that the current rating is very limited on these. So in a lot of older installations, you might have mercury bulbs and they can handle a lot more current. In some cases with the older style, the mercury bulbs, pumps were driven directly off of the mercury contact because it 
was rated for a higher amperage. But it's important we don't do that. Also on the older unit, you may see that there are adjustment screws here. Those are not for field adjustment. Those are for calibration set up at the factory. When included with a sight glass and tricox in this extended column, the numbers change to a 157. Same head, just has a different column. We're gonna look at the second of the 150 style heads, and this is a manual reset. So a manual reset is typically gonna be in a secondary column, separate from your primary cutoff and pump control, frequently on the other side of the boiler even. And what we have to remember when it's a secondary is that we don't necessarily want it to restart the boiler. Because if we trip on low water and the primary doesn't shut down and the secondary does, we're gonna to wanna to investigate and see what's wrong. So we've got a manual reset switch. So like the other McDonald Miller, this actually has a pump circuit in it and this can be used for level control, but unlike the other one, when the water level falls below the trip point, the mechanical microswitch releases and won't allow it to reset regardless of level. So we'll have to push the reset button to close that contact and let it re resume operation. We're gonna look at the McDonald Miller 193-194 float family. Now this is a 93 head because it doesn't have the sight glass on it, but the float head for the series is the same. And essentially we've got a two-part float head. We've got a switch assembly and we've got a float assembly. The float assembly linkage raises and lowers a magnet within this brass enclosure to actuate a whole family of switches which we're gonna look at. The 5A switch has two switch sets, generally one's used for the burner control circuit and one used for a pump control circuit. So the 5A works pretty much identically to the McDonnell Miller 150. The big difference is this switch mechanism can be installed and removed with pressure on the boiler because removing the head's not required. So each of the switches has an indicator and we can see as the level changes, the magnet will make those at specific locations. Another benefit to this is we can reorient this switch in whatever direction is convenient. I just prefer to have this facing outward so I can use the visual indicators. So this is for a safety circuit and for a pump on off level control circuit. We're gonna look at the 5M switch for the 9394 series. The M means manual reset. So we can use this switch anywhere we want uh, the manual reset of the switch to be required um, if the boiler shuts down on low water. We generally want to use a manual reset on any secondary low water cutoff because our primary is usually an automatic reset on a fire tube boiler so the boiler can catch up with water and restart. But if we trip the secondary, often that means that the primary didn't do its job or there's a more significant problem. So having a manual reset on there gets the operator in there. Anytime you reset a manual reset, you wanna do a little follow up and see what caused the problem. We're gonna look at the McDonald Miller number six switch. Now, don't be surprised if you haven't heard of it because they're not very common. I just happened upon it when I was going through the parts department. So I guess we've got a little bit of everything in there. What makes a, uh, the number six switch unique is that it's just one switch. So it's identical in function to the five switch. It's just a designed for a burner circuit only. So you could use this for a high level alarm, a low level alarm, a primary low level trip, but it's just one switch. While we don't run into a lot of these in the field, they are likely out there, so now you've seen them here. We're gonna look at a lower pressure control that we might often see on a cast iron sectional or even a fire tube boiler that's operating at 15 PSI or lower. 
Now this control, instead of having a designated flange float chamber, screws in to the casting or into uh, coupling on the side of the boiler. Because of that, we need to have extra concern that it's going to hit something and bind the float. So this control, the McDowell Miller 69, has a chamber that's integrated with the control so that that float can't be bound. So this should never be removed because then that float could be subject to getting stuck. And we have to totally remember that it's the job of these to shut the boiler off when there's low water so we can't have anything interfering with its operation. We're gonna take a close look at a misconception um, that often leads to problems in the boiler room. If you look at the McDowell Miller head for a 150 and you look at the column for a 93 head, the flanges are identical. In fact, the flanges are at about the same angle. So you might presume that you could remove a 150 head and just pop a 93 head in there and get modulating control without changing the column. And that's not going to work, and let me show you why. So we succeeded on getting the head mounted on there, and everything looks good from the outside. The problem is inside. The amount of range for travel of this float will allow the burner switch to make or break, but as you can see, the slide wire doesn't have sufficient range. So we end up with the feed water valve not opening and closing correctly, and it's not gonna work. So basically the only way to successfully use this head on the boiler is to have the correct column.